Hello everybody, my name is Mathilde and I am a Fold Application Engineer at Kinova. In the previous series of video, we saw how to unpack and install your Gen3 robotic arm, how to configure your connection between your computer and your robot, and finally I gave you a detailed description of what you can find on the web app. I voluntarily left aside the tab concerning the operations. It is this tab that we are going to discover today. So, we will learn how to create protection zones, actions, and sequence of actions. Let's do it! First, enter the IP address of your robot and enter your username and password and click on Connect. Then go in the Operations tab and in the camera page. This section concerns only the users who have a vision module installed on their Gen3 robotic arm. In this page, you can see the real-time streaming video of your camera. You also can start the autofocus of your camera and pause the process. You can launch a focus now and you can disable the last focus action you registered. Now let's go in the Protection Zone pages. This page allows you to define and activate multiple three-dimensional geographic volumes around the robot, where the robot cannot go, and optionally where the maximum speed is constrained. An important thing to know is that Protection Zone only work when controlling the robot in Cartesian mode. When controlling the robot in Angular mode, they are ignored. To give you an example, my robot is surrounded by a table and a wall. Both are in my robot's workspace. I don't want my robot to hit the table on the wall, so I will define two protection zones, one for my wall and one for my table. There are two different ways to create protection zone. The first one is to import a protection zone that you have already created. To do so, click on the import button in the top right of your page. You can import protection zone we are which are in JSON file or XML document. Let's try it. I will try with the JSON source file and I click on open and I can see my protection zone. If I delete it and try it with the other format, I will try with the XML document, open, and yes, it's work. You can also create a protection zone from the web app. To do so, click on the plus button. First, you need to choose the geometric shape of your protection zone. As I want to represent my table, I will choose a prism. Then, to edit the main purposes of your protection, click on the little dot here and a tab will appear in the right of your screen. Let's first rename our protection zone. It's going to be a table. And then, let's go through all the properties I can, I can configure. First, I can choose to activate or not my protection zone. If it's not activated, my robot won't see it. If it is activated, my robot will see it. There are no hard limits to the number of simultaneous active protection zones, but for best performance, I recommend activating at most four protection zones at the same time. I will activate it my zone. Okay, then you can define the position of your zone from the base. Your protection zone has to be in the robot's workspace. This is the reason why the numerical values you can enter are limited. For example, I cannot put 500. Okay, my table is in, the in front of, of my robot and I will put here. My table is perpendicular to the base, so I won't change neither the orientation nor the rotation, the rotation matrix. I will then adapt um, the dimensions of my prism. And I put a rhythm of 200 and a depth of, sorry, 200. In the process of creating your protection zone, you can be helped by the view uh, page. You can change the orientation of the view using the left button of your mouse. And you can change the tra translation uh, by using the right button. Then you can zoom in or out by scrolling the wheel of your mouse or by using the plus and minus button 
um, in the bottom of your page. You also can select the type of you, you want, for example, left or right, but I will go back to either. Okay? Let's go back to our tab. In the limit subtapes, I can activate the speed limit option. This means that I will define an envelope around my protection zone in which the speed of my robot will be limited. I will define, for example, the thickness to 10 cm and the speed of my robots in this envelope to 5 cm per second. Finally, I be sure to activate both my tables and my wall protection zone. And now I can try it in real. You can see that when entering in the envelope, the robot slows down to 5 cm per second. Then the robot completely stops when arriving to the protection zone. Once you have created your protection zone, they are saved whatever the actions or sequence of actions you send to your robot. According to your environment, you just have to activate or deactivate them. Then, if you want to save them in your computer to transfer them to another user or another robot, you can export them in JSON format or XML format. To do so, click on the little dot and click on Export JSON. Your protection zone will be automati automatically downloaded. And this is the same thing for the XML format. Now let's focus on the Actions page. The Actions page allows you to define, view and edit robot actions, as well as build sequences and playback actions and sequences. You can find five pre-programmed actions. The demo sequence is an ordered list of predefined actions. The home action is an angular action where the robot reaches its own position, which is represented by a set of joint angles for each of the arm joints. Similarly, the packaging retract and zero actions are all angular actions. We will see that we can also create Cartesian action and end effector actions. There are three ways to create an action. As for the protection zone, the first way is to import a predefined action in JSON or XML format. To do so, just click on the import button in the top right of your screen. Then you can upload a JSON format or a XML format. Let's try with a JSON format. And here you have your actions. Then the second way to create an action is uh, by using the snapshot option. Where then, as we saw in a previous in a previous video, when you click on the snapshot icon in the control menu, you can take a snapshot of your robot position, either Cartesian, Angular, or end effector position. When I click on the snapshot, whatever is the type of snapshot, an action is automatically created, for example, Angular. If I play these actions, my robot will reach the position, either Cartesian, Angular or end effector, I saved when I took the snapshot. The last way to create an action or a sequence is by clicking on the plus button in the bottom of the page. You can choose between create a sequence, a pose actions, an angular actions, or a end effector actions. One last thing in the actions page. You will find a card for each actions or sequence saved in your user session. For each card, you can launch the actions or the sequence by clicking on the play button. Or you can edit it, duplicate it, delete it, or export it. Now, let's create our own actions and sequences. Let's create our first end effector action. The first thing to do is to rename your actions in order to better identify it. For example, test end effector 1. Then you can configure the position you want the end effector to reach. The position is expressed as a percentage of finger closure. So 100 corresponds to perfectly closed and 0 or 1 to perfectly open. Let's try for example 57. 
then you can define a constraint for your action. For an end effect or action, you can define a duration constraint. This controls the times taken for the gripper to complete the movement. Let's, let's put 300 milliseconds. Then you can play your action. Now let's create an angular action. As before, begin by renaming your action. Test Angular 1. The Joint Angle Actions Editor allows you to modify the angular position in degrees for each actuator on the robot. You can enter a value with your cable or you can play with a cursor. In red, the position you can reach because of cell collision, for example. A 3D visualization is displayed showing the pulse produced by your current angle setting. So we saw that in red it's not possible. You're gonna reach a protection zone. So let's try something. Okay. And. Okay. And last one. Uh, then you can apply constraints for an angular actions. You can apply an angular speed or duration constraint for the movement towards the endpoint. For example, give it a duration constraint. If the duration is too short, uh, the um, action will launch, but didn't happen. Won't happen. Then you can click on play, and you will see your robot moving during the during the completion of the action. And this is it. Let's continue and create a pose action. Here. First things, rename it. Pose test 1. The Pose Action Editor allows you to modify the endpoint position and orientation of the end effector. You have to enter the number manually, so for example 0 0.1, 0 and 0 0.5 and 0 minus 1 and this. Okay. Um, a basic 3D um, visualization is displayed, showing a representation of the base and its frame, and a little sphere with axes representing the tool frame orientation here. There is also an option to apply um, a translation speed constraint for the movement towards the endpoint. Let's try, for example, 0 0.1, and then let's play it. And then, as for uh, the angular action, you can see the robots moving. So, last but not least, let's create our first sequence of actions. Click on the plus button and select Sequence. The Sequence uh, Editors allow you to create and add a new wish endpoint action, either Cartesian, joint angles, or end effect of position to a sequence. You can, so, you can also add a delay or add an existing library action to a sequence. For example, the home position defined in the pre-program home actions. Let's go through all of this. We can start by adding uh, end effect or wish position action we find the exact same editor as before. So let's choose a name, gripper action one, and a position, for example, 30%. And we can apply a constraint if you want, for example, a duration, 300 milliseconds. Then let's add a angular pose. I like this post, so I will keep it. I don't have to add any constraint, but I have to add a name. Um, joints and positions 1. Sorry. Then let's add a delay. For the delay, you can only choose the duration between 1 and 60 seconds. Let's say 3. And this is the delay 1. 
then I will have a uh, rich pose action. So this is my action and I want to go maybe from the top more far, for example 0 0.55 more on the right, 0 0.1 and OK I know this is my new position so this is pose number one then I want to add a delay delay number two, three seconds and then I want to finish uh, my sequence by the zero position from the library. So let's add it from action library. Remember it was in Angular Actions and then zero. Let's add it. So I have a lot of actions in my sequence, but I want to change the order. To do so, let's click on your position and hold it and move it. Then delay, then quick action, then delay, then pause, and let's add one more delay, delay, three seconds, okay, and move it. So, my sequence is going to the angular position, stop, play with the gripper, stop, reach the Cartesian pose, stop, and then reach the zero position. So, for my sequence, I can click on the play button and it's gonna launch it. So let's try it. I just click on this one and try it. I can click in pause if I want to pause my sequence. And stop if I want to stop my whole sequence. And then we can see that my sequence is now complete. One last thing to mention about uh, the sequence is how to add action to a sequence using the teaching mode. So let's try, let's create a new sequence, for example, teaching sequence, sequence. Within the sequence editor, I can enter the teaching mode by clicking on the teach button here. Then I can choose the admittance mode in which I want to place the robot, Cartesians, Null Space or Joint. So I can manipulate the robot by hand and take snapshot of my positions. The snapshot can be captured in one of two ways. Using the on screen um, icon we saw here, or using the physical buttons on the interface wrist button. Entering teaching mode changes the control mapping of the interface module buttons. To take a snapshot, click on the left hand side button after moving your robot. To open the gripper, click on the right hand side button, hold the button to close it. The type of the snapshot taken depends on the admitted mode chosen. If a snapshot is captured and the gripper position is changed since the previous point in the sequence, both robot position and gripper position snapshot will be captured. First, select the admitted mode you want. Move your robot and then using, use the right button to take a snapshot. Then, move your robot again and use the wrist buttons to change the gripper position. Then, take a snapshot and you will see that both join positions and gripper position will be saved. Once you have finished with the teaching mode, you can quit it and go back to uh, your sequence editor and continue your sequence. So you have the snapshot and you can, for example, add uh, home position. This is the end of this video. This video ends the tutorials on the Gen3 web application. It was a pleasure to share it with you. Don't hesitate to comment this series of video because your feedback is very important to us. Bye bye!